and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogwele ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. The purpose of Christianity is not just to change your life. It's not to heal you. It's so that you can become a dwelling place of divinity, of deity. That God can begin to live in you, talk in you, move in you. He said, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. So he said, come out from among them, touch not your unclean thing. I said, if you go to God and get deliverance, get healing, but you will not submit your life to serve him, you are looking for trouble. You're looking for very serious trouble. Because anytime God wants to bring people out of Egypt, he has one verdict. Let my people go that they may serve me. Everyone said that. Two sides. One, Satan, let them go. That is Pharaoh. Any deliverance that will not end in service will return back into bondage. There is no accidental salvation. You are saved to serve. There is no, no deliverance without a purpose. You are delivered to serve. God saved you so he can use you. So you can become an expression of who he is. You become his child, member of his family. And you become an instrument in his hand. Everybody might not be a pastor. Everybody, But there is a part we can play in God's universal program in these last days. This is why you have to note this. In the Old Testament time, only three groups, groups of people can have the Holy Spirit. Only three. The rest of the people are not permitted. It is the costliest gift in heaven. Of course, Catherine Kuma said, the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you find it, and that woman, she will point her bony finger when she says this with emphasis. If you find it, you have found heaven's treasure. I think the costliest thing for Nigerians now is our oil wells. For South Africa, it might be their diamond mine. If you declare war now, want to see the South South, Nigerian government will have to fight because they know that that is a major source of the economy of this nation. The major source. The, the greatest resource in heaven. The most costly thing that God has is the Holy Spirit. That's why when he gives it, he gives you his, the, the ability, the, the right to share. You have to understand what God is giving you. He's actually giving you the ability to actually share your life with him. It's like the sanctity of marriage where after the two people come into covenant and they pledge their love and loyalty to each other, when they get to the family, they open up everything to each other. The man can now see the nakedness of that woman. The woman can see the nakedness of the other man without being ashamed. It's like God now opening up his nakedness to you. Willing to live with you. Willing to share with you. Willing to walk with you. Willing to talk with you. What do you look for in a man that is filled with the Holy Spirit? I, I know that some, when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in other tongues and other. But tongues is not the evidence. It's not the only thing that... You, the, the, actually, what do you really look for? When you want to say that a man is filled with the Holy Spirit, what you look for is God in his being. I want to see divinity in you. See people filling churches and I see you going to native doctors, going to the occult, seeking for help from different places because they don't know the Holy Spirit. They don't know him. If they have had a revelation of the Holy Spirit, they will know that they've reached the ultimate of power. There is no other place to go to. He said, ah, this case, so they told me that I need to visit the village. I need to go and see my people. But this case is beyond church. He's a Christian. No? Next thing you see him before a satanic priesthood. One man with all kinds of things on his eyes. Or one barefooted prophet somewhere. Or red wearing or whatever. This is a Christian. Temple of the living God. Before the temple of demons. 
should be the native doctor coming to you for deliverance. It should be the native doctor coming to you for help. And you carry God. It happened in the Bible. The ark, because this temple of the Holy Spirit we are, there are examples of it in the Bible. You have Solomon's temple, you have Moses' tabernacle, you, you even have what is called the ark of covenant. That ark of covenant is where you find the presence of God resting. They put it in the holiest of all. And it represents Jesus. But it also represents the fact that we as the temple of God are actually mobile. We can carry the presence of God around. And once that ark of covenant was captured by the Philistines. And to show their victory over the nation of Israel and their humili the humiliation of the God of Israel, they carried that ark to the temple of Dagon with all those priests, demon-possessed priests, all those soothsayers and wizards and witches that served Dagon. And when they saw the ark of God, I'm very sure that even they themselves were afraid. But they were surprised that this ark could be captured. Because this is the ark that the moment you bring it in the battle, the battle is finished. What happened? The people sinned so much that the presence of God departed. So you, the presence of God departed. They called it the ark, but the glory has departed. That's the same thing that happened. If somebody loses the Holy Spirit and the order, the enemy can capture him cheap. But that day, there's something about the God of Israel you need to know. He is a jealous God. We have some things you can do. He actually withdrew his presence. He meant for Israel to lose the battle. But he didn't mean for his name to be disgraced like that. So the moment that ark was dropped before Dagon, the God of the Philistines, God got angry. He said, even though I'm angry with my people, I have to defend my name here first. So the one that left decided to come back that night. After the priest left, he just came back. <laughs> the ark became an unusual ark again. Because it's not the box. It's not this physical body that is issue. It's what is dwelling in us. Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than that able and native doctor that is operating in your village. Greater is he that is in you than that charm that buried in your gate. Greater is he that is in you than that charm that are trying to use to remove you from office. Greater is he that is in you than whatever power that is at work in the world. The Holy Spirit re-enter the ark. It's like when Samson lost the Holy Spirit. But after the disgrace reached a point, he prayed one prayer, Lord, forgive me. Just one more time, anoint me. Just one more time. His own was immorality. And they had tied him. They had removed his eyes. This is the man that could not be beaten. This is a man. You don't understand. That is the only mystery behind our strength. Sometimes some people like healing and miracles. It becomes surprised to some people. It shouldn't be a surprise to a Christian. Because you are supposed to be doing it. They capture Samson when he lost the anointing. When you are empty of God, then you become cheap meat for the devil. Pulled out his eyes. But even in the last minute, he said, Lord, remember me this one more time. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, and that ark was charged again. By this time, Samson was standing between two pillars. He has told a small boy that was guiding him. And if listeners were celebrating, laughing, that they have captured this man. If you are anointed, beware. Never play with the anointing because if you do and lose the anointing, demons will teach you, especially all the old ones. Especially if you are like us who cast out devils, de dealing with them everywhere. You can imagine if God removes his hand from my life. You know how many millions of demons I have cast out? They say, hey, they will call the other one. Hello, who are you? Demon blindness. Where are you calling from? Ah, I heard that that man, oh, that used to terrorize us. Somebody passed by his house and saw the house empty. He said, are you sure? Don't put head, oh. I don't want to die. He said, I'm very sure. I checked. He is powerless. God forbid. I would rather die than lose the presence of God. It's better for me to go back to heaven and rest. Samson told the small boy, he said, the thing has come, oh. <laughs> Just lift my hand and touch the two pillars. There was a whole building. <laughs> oh, you have not done anything. That's why it's called supernatural. Beyond the natural or supernatural. He held two pillars. The people were dancing. They reduced them to nothing. They didn't know. That's why when that anointing comes upon you this night, the, the demons that used to torment you will get a shock of their lives. 
This guy is no more that small girl I used to slap around though. Ah. The guy just held the pillars. I shook it by the anointing. The whole building collapsed. The Bible said Samson killed more Philistines in his death than he killed throughout his lifetime. That's what happened to that Ichabod Ark. Even though God departed, the glory departed, but when God saw his name being disgraced, he came. And the moment the presence of God came back into the ark, ah, that God said, hey, 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 hey. You know those idols they make, they have demons behind it. The demons know. They saw one ark walking through the streets of Galilee. A madman saw it. He said, hey, 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 have you come to torment us before the time? Hey, 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 I know who you are. I know who you are. Why? Because they can see what is inside. If you are carrying God on the inside, demons can see it. And they know this one, you don't touch him. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I said, even flies, flies know when the stove is hot. <laughs> you know, when you finish cooking and you have some of those rice and stew, drop on the stove and it's cold. Flies will come there and be throwing party. Put the stove on and it's hot. Flies will cease too. He said, ah, this one is me too. There's party in the kitchen. And he tries to go. He said, oh, no go area. Take off from this way. That's what demons do. That's what demons do. Because the Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And when he says he's anointed, he's talking about everyone that's carrying the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? amen. Dagon fell and said, sorry sir. Hey, I didn't know as he fell, his head cut off. His hands were cut off. All his legs were cut off. He said, that is a warning for any other God that will try it. And then the, all the soothsayers, the priests came there in the morning. By this time, a plague broke out. All of them are sick with mysterious sicknesses and ailments. And so they go to their gods. They're asking their gods for help. Their God, the gods say, I need help myself. Somebody's holding my neck, please. Remove that axe so I can be free myself. Because that night God said, let my people go. The night he finally executed, he said, I will execute judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. Dagon told him, he said, please, go and remove that thing. Even me, I'm in trouble. I can't help you. And when you remove it, please send offering and tithes. Send sacrifice to the God of Israel. You know what? The priest called the king of Elisa, called all the people and said, we're in trouble. People are dying all over the land. He said, the God of the Jews has come again. Oh, send his ark back and send offerings with it. So they got what is called a chariot or a cart. Let's use chariot today. They got a group of horses or donkeys. Tied some vehicles behind them. You know, these trucks. And the animals were the ones to drive it. They carried the ark and put there. And they loaded the thing with all kinds of sacrifices. Just to say sorry to God. And God showed them another wonder. They said, this is how we know. If this unction has returned. If it is really God. Or coincidence. The Philistines were talking to themselves. He said, this is how we know. We will load all this and put the ark. But we will not lead these animals back to the land of Israel. We will see if these animals will find their way by themselves. And they loaded the thing. The moment they finished loading the ark, uh, the, the, the chariots, and dropped the ark inside, the anointing came on the horses. The anointing came on the, all the animals. There was once in the Bible, it was prophet Balaam that was misbehaving. God came on the animal, and the animal started prophesying to a mad prophet. Why will God use dog where he can use you? Why will God use cow where he has you to use? Don't you know God is looking for voices he can use to speak? He's looking for hands he can use to touch. He's looking for people he can use to bring his love and mercy to people. Just like you see demons everywhere, tormenting people, harassing people. God raised you as a Christian to be the only force that can check the influence of evil in society. All the donkeys came under the anointing. And all of a sudden, their brain came alive. Why? <laughs> because even the animals can be possessed. Did you hear what I just said? I say even the animals can be possessed.
every living thing you see is like a car there is a space inside for a driver god created you with a space for him to sit in and they started moving the, the, the priests were following them i fell for fear of dying and they were following. the thing got to the border of israel turned and looked at the priest bye bye and moved on through the route of Ephraim, moved on towards the tribes of israel He said, can animals be anointed? Go and ask the donkey that carries Jesus on the triumphant entry. That donkey knows what it means to be anointed. <laughs> and I, I saw a mystery that day. That even when an animal is anointed, he gets respected. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> those donkeys, those donkeys were being used for sacrifices by the priests. But this is how their own life escaped. <laughs> They can't be killed anymore by the Philistines. They just escaped and joined the children of Israel over to the other side. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> the one that spoke to the donkey that carries Jesus as they were going. People were spreading clothes on the ground for the donkey to march on. You want to live the realm of ordinary life. You want to live the realm of obscurity. You want to stand out in life. Why don't you find this treasure called the Holy Spirit? Do you know the amazing thing is a gift, a free gift for that matter. The only problem is God gives it to hungry hearts. No, he doesn't give it to people who are not hungry. You have to know the value of what God is giving before you can have it and retain it. Even people who get gifts from God lose it because they don't know the value. You have to know the value. The Bible says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That is the cure for all these demonic attacks in your life. That is the check for all this demonic harassment. That is the check for all this. They buried charm. They didn't bury charm. Bury charm for me. I'm charm myself walking about. You are trying to bury charm for me. We are the ones that if you bring for sacrifice, the altar will reject us. You say, you use Christian for sacrifice. You don't know what you are talking about. He needs to get born again a second time. Because if he actually happens, both the priest, the altar, the God and all their families will be wiped out. You don't understand something. Just ordinary vessels. Before you talk about human vessels, we are the vessels God uses. But when God told Moses to build a tabernacle for him, he created different vessels of gold, silver, all kinds of vessels in that temple that are used in the service of God to represent different types of men and giftings in the body of Christ. Some of us are called in this way. Some of us are called with this gift. Some of us are called to heal. Some of us are called in the music ministry. Some of us are called in different areas. But we are different verses, but we are all in the service of God. That's why he told Moses, mold them with gold. Put them in that tabernacle for the service. Just that Nebuchadnezzar captured those things. That was another time the children of Israel sinned so much. They brought idol worship into the temple. God got angry and his presence withdrew. So he became an empty box again. And God sent Jeremiah to warn them that I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar to destroy this house. That's why God was warning us too in the New Testament that when we defy the temple of God, what happened to Solomon's temple can happen to this body. He said, hand them over to the devil for the destruction of the body that the spirit may be saved on the lost day. A lot of believers died before their time because of such things. Not discerning the Lord's body. The only one dis defy the temple of God, God will destroy him. Because the real temple is you, your body. Nebuchadnezzar succeeded. Because God even said he was going to back him up to get. But anyway, they carried all those golden vessels down. And Nebuchadnezzar himself, because he used to listen to Jeremiah the prophet, after he captured the city, he set Jeremiah free. He told him, anywhere you want to go, if you follow me to Babylon, you'll be a free man. I'll provide everything. If you want to stay back in Jerusalem, you are not one of those. I came here to judge those wicked people who are bringing idol worship into the house of God. Jeremiah said, I want to stay back in Jerusalem, and they allowed him to stay. Anyway, he, he had a level of insight. He didn't try touching those vessels. He died, his son became the king. He said, Ah, uh -uh, share my father. There are vessels of gold and all that in the store. He said, Yes. He said, That we brought from Israel. He said, Yes. Yeah. He said, Bring them. Let me use them to drink. Me and my wives. 
uh, today is the day we remember one of our gods. And we need to sit in his temple and drink wine with vessels from the house of the living God. Anytime you get to that point, God in heaven is provoked again. That's why if you live for him, let me see who can touch you. He said he that touched to touch it what? The apple of my eyes. When the person finishes experiencing vengeance, he will learn. Just me alone can wipe a whole city. Because of me, a whole city can be wiped out. He said, I give men in exchange for your life, even nations for your sake. I met a professor in the hospital. He was dying, UNTH. They called me to come and pray for him. And um, the disease could not be defined. They put him in isolation ward. And my mother-in-law works there, so she's always zealous. Whenever they meet critical case, you have to come, please. I got there. What, what's wrong with you? He said, you don't understand, Pastor. Please ask God to forgive me. I'm ready to die, but let him just forgive me before I die. I said, what is he forgiving you about? You want to give your life to Christ? He said, it's not just that one. He said, people have come here and told me to give my life. He said, he said I raped a Christian girl in the university. I've been trying, and that girl has been telling me I can never give my body to another. Finally, one day, she came to my office for something, and I locked the door and raped her. I said, you raped And the girl told me, that from that day that I will become a useless person. He said, all of a sudden, this ailment started from his private parts and then spread to his body. And they have not been able to. Even the people treating don't know what it is they are treating. I said, you did that? He said, yes. I said, hey. A man drank with a cup dedicated to God. You drank with a human being dedicated to God. You went to drink water? From a whole human being. Somebody is the temple of the living God. If he is the girl that gave herself to you, it will be her own sin. So after, she can be that you went and collected a vessel that is given over to God Almighty and you use it to drink in the temple of your God. You are worshiping the God of loss. I was very angry. He said, Please, Reverend, calm down. I remember that I was I'm supposed to be winning so <laughs> So I pray for a lady to Christ. Ask God for forgiveness. I left. He died. But I'm glad he will be in heaven. Then I met a young girl. She was a virgin. That man forced. And he said, you can report it anywhere because there is nothing they can do about it. These days, if you report rape, you are even more in trouble because you are the one carrying the sin. Nothing comes out of it. Don't worry. Nigeria is changing very soon. You try such things. You will see that it can be dealt with here in court. And Nebuchadnezzar's son. He didn't hear how God turned his father to a chimpanzee. He forgot about it. For seven years. Sent him in the bush. He grabbed holy cups. Holy vessels. Before his God. And started drinking. I, I'm telling you what God will do to native doctors witches to wizards that touch you after you give up yourself to be dedicate your life consecrate yourself to become an instrument in the hand of god and begin to serve him with dedication what he will do to anybody i don't care who tries to put a curse a, a spell on you who tries to abuse your life i'm telling you what he will do you don't have to pray for them i'm telling you what god will do because god gets over you with jealousy See how God defends ordinary man-made vessel, which he can ask another person more than another cup. All of a sudden, God said, eh? This king, I dealt with your father. You didn't learn? Ah! He said, in case of Nebuchadnezzar, I forgave him after seven years. You are in, in case this night. God hand appeared on the wall. Mene, mene, teke, seke. Is that right? The king was thrown into jeopardy with all his wife. I think the wine fell from their hand. He started calling the magician. The magicians came. They looked at this one. You know, like the ones from Philistine. He said, this one is beyond us. They asked the demons to interpret. The demons said, even our necks are under hold. Somebody is holding us. We can't talk. We need help. Please remove that cup from there. Why are you people always bringing trouble to my temple? I didn't tell you everything is ready for to bring. You don't bring everybody here. Everybody is not for sacrifice. Can somebody say Amen. 
everybody cannot be used for ritual murder. Both the priests and all of them will die. He said, there is one man, only one man in this whole kingdom can tell us what is going on here. He said, who is he? He said, it's Daniel. Uh That is the question that God sent me to ask you tonight. He said, in the midst of astrologers, magicians, satanic priesthood, I have to have a witness in their midst. And he said, the issue is that you are my witness. But many of you are not acting like one. He said, there is one man, he, though he's a politician, no, he is the prime minister, he is secretary to the state government, no, he is the chief judge of the state, understands <laughs> his role as a priest and as a prophet. He didn't join the magician. He said, please initiate me. You know, when you win, get into election and you get into power, they'll be trying you from every corner. Since you people are many, please take me and initiate me into shamanism or initiate me into any of these, your Babylonian occult. So, because, you know, I can't just be one man here and everybody's trying me from every corner. No. He knew the ministry of bended knees. Everyone said bended knees. Kabalesho, Kabradahaya, Kosayaba. Three times in a day. He will turn and face Jerusalem because a priest must learn how to pray. A priest must learn how to worship. A priest must. You are a priest. These are the two callings you are given the moment you give your life to Christ. First, you are made a priest. Second, you are a king. You are a territorial spirit. You are a principality. You say, eh? we buy principalities and powers. Yes. The negative ones. Just like we have fake kings like Saddam Hussein, dictators. But we also had elected governments. Responsible governments. You are God's responsible government on earth. You are the extension of the government of God. That's why he called you king. Any territory where you are placed, Satan should be checked. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. Satan should be checked. He shouldn't have just freedom to be wrecking havoc anywhere. The people who can protect the destiny of this state are the priests and the kings of God. Some of them might be in politics. Some of them might not be. You don't have to have the government house before you can do your job. There was a priest in that land who has stood out and manifested his priesthood. They knew about him. So they say, king, in the days of your father, there's one man who oh, da, da, da. they sent for him. The moment he came, he looked at, ah, trouble. He said, king, what did you do? He said, I drank with golden cup. He said, did you know what those cups represent? And you drank with them in the presence of your God. Ah, king, let me tell you, I wish this thing belongs to those who, your enemies. But now it's on your head. He said, mene, mene, your kingdom has been weighed and found one thing. Take a second. God is concluding your reign this night. And your life is going. That same night, he died. Hey, let's just read one place. We can go home. Can I see here an amen? amen. Mm, just one place. People go for meetings like this. They just want healings and all that. Mm-mm. It's not good for you. You need healing. Then you need knowledge. Then the healing can stay. Can I hear an amen? amen? You need knowledge, my friend. You need knowledge. Even in medicine, when they give you something, whatever, they give you instructions. Take it two times a day take this whatever then stop eating this and other because even if you take it and you're all right they tell you stop this stop that then you are free you disregard the knowledge even what the message has cured you bring it back jesus said you know the truth and the truth shall make you free how many of you are god's children here let me see your hand then touch yourself say i'm a priest say i'm a king Oh, I think I need to show it to you. That's the scripture. We'll close with it. Deuteronomy chapter 18. It's good to read, though. Somebody say he just preached. He didn't read the Bible. Um, Bible that you are reading. <laughs> so when you finish, you look at the book you've been carrying. It becomes easier to understand. 
my father that gave birth to me, he's still alive. He's a young man. If he's been hearing of our crusades, and then I led him to Christ and all that, but he has never attended one. And so one time, I came to the city where he lives to hold crusade. <laughs> and he came the first night. And blind people were seeing, and deaf people. He said at first, this thing looked to him like, ah, how can somebody be doing, is this, then until somebody he knew, he saw the woman, when the woman came out, he had known about that case for 15 years. God healed. He said, ah. He said, for, you know what he told me after? He said, for the first time in his life, he now believed that these things they were writing in the Bible is true. So, in other words, he reads about Jesus opening blind as another. To him, it's like one of those fairy tales you tell children. Do you know that many people, I'm telling you, somebody was telling me, he said, I used to think that Jerusalem was in heaven or maybe another planet. No wonder God is not real to him. The second night, he went to grab another woman. She, she, I, I don't know what caused her problem, but I also, when I laid hands on her, because the people that were catching can't catch her. She's so fat. Because her own is that she can't walk. She's so fat. That she would knock the two the two people with her as she's she got healed and came out to give her testimony and then I laid hands on her. She would knock the whole people down. So stronger people came. I laid hands on her a second time. She knocked all of them down. So after she came, I said, I'm glad God has healed you, but I really think you need to adjust some of the things you are eating. If you see her, she's the, the upper body is so big, you see those two st small sticks carrying this big giant house. The legs are not as big as. I don't know how to explain it. Some people add weight at different places, some in their face, some. Her own was too much. So I, I, my head suspected that it, her weight may have contributed to her leg problem. I don't know, you know. I'm glad does, God doesn't tell me everything. Mm, I'm very glad for that. Once he tells me, I use. The ones he doesn't, let him go ahead. The important thing is, the man is helping people. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Say it, I'm a priest. Say it again, I am a priest. If you're not born again, don't say that at all. Because you are not. But if you're giving your life to Christ, even if it's one minute ago, salvation brings you out of Egypt and takes you into the royal priesthood. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribes of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. In case you don't know what he's talking about, what he's saying is that when the 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 ones who fully go into the priestly ministry, like fivefold ministry as we have it today, the apostles, prophets, and teachers, they, they don't work, they don't have all those kind of businesses. So because of that, they are sustained by what people give into their life in the course of the gospel. That's all right. And then for the Lord had chosen him out of all the tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever, the Levitical priesthood. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of Israel, where he sojourned, he kept talking about this. And then he started talking about the different sacrifices they give to the Lord, which the priests have their portion to eat. Then, just keep going. He now go to verse 9. Verse 8 said, The priests themselves shall have like portions to eat, beside that which cometh of the cell of his patrimony. Then verse 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, 
or a consultant with familiar spirit or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of this abomination the lord thy god doth drive them out from before thee god said it's an abomination to go to native doctors it's an abomination to go to witch doctors it's an abomination to use charms it's an abomination to go to barefooted red wearing white wearing priests actually there are native doctors disguised in form of priests I, I'm, I'm even glad to let you know I, just that I don't have the time to get into this fully that some of them even wear suit and tie today but then it won't be long the man will tell you ah we need to come and do special work in your house bring a special candle gold and then or we're going to take you to this river and bath you or 12 midnight we're going to say some special prayer whether they call it prayer or call it medicine all of them are the same There's a child of God, a woman who was talking with me. She had cancer. And she told me, they carried me to one man, a powerful man in Lagos, that people, thousands of people go there for healing. Because they told me initially, my husband convinced me. She's a child of God, but she had that attack. She didn't know all her rights in Christ. So her husband said, ah, let's go to prophet, so, so, so. And they carried her there. And they will wear things. They write what is wrong with you. Some will write HIV, some will write you carry it. And it was her turn. So the prophet took her, he did all the things, and then took her inside where they now do. He said, When I got in there, I told myself, It is better for me to die of cancer than to lose my soul in hell. I said, why did you say that? He said, because when you get there, if you ever know God, if you are a child of God, you will know. He said, because when they do the initial one and they can't, they don't take you into a place that is inside one place and they start all series of, you know it's purely occult. I'm not interested in anything, but I want to let you know two key principles here. Number one, there are satanic priesthood. Everyone said that. Because this is a city too that is bewitched by this series of activities. When I say back, I'm talking about a state. Do you know that majority of the cases you see us dealing on stages, very few are normal sicknesses. Majority of those things have demonic activities behind them. But I want to let you know something. Do you know why the multitudes of your citizens are going to these men, native doctors? My grandmother got a young boy from one of the villages here to come and serve him. She lives in the village alone. So we always provide people to live with him. And uh, they got a young boy here, very young, to live with my grandma in the village. And um, he was going to school. And we were planning that after his secondary school, he will come into town and stay with one of my brothers and learn business and all that. And then the same message that my attention is needed at home. I said, I cannot come and busy. I'm traveling for. He said, Don't wait till somebody is dead before you arrive. When I had that kind of message, I went. I thought somebody was sick or something. Only to get there, it was this guy. He will pour water in the cup. He will show you my grandmother, signs and wonder, and turn the cup. The water will not pour out. <laughs> Small boy. Then he will pour water in a basket, and the water will not leak. In our boys' quarters, so they sent for my mom. I'm glad that one is an intercessor. He's a functioning priest. So when she got there, the Holy Spirit told her, go to the boys' quarter, to that boy's room. The boys' quarters had two rooms in it. And they got to one and found out that the boy had set up his shrine in my house. Hey. 
Anyway, thank God he's a small boy. We had to get him delivered and get, get him out of that thing. But initially, when I heard it, I said, hey. They tried to deal with him. They couldn't. So they asked me to come. When I finally got there, the reason they sent for me is because one of my cousins came back. A young girl, she came back for her just to stay with her grandma. And that boy told her, he said, I will make you now, you start bleeding from now till you are an old woman. He was asking a girl that's older than him out. For a relationship. And that one insulted him because she didn't know. The boy said, eh? Me? You think because I'm small? He said, okay, I will teach you something. I don't want to make you bleed yet because I think you will be my girlfriend. Let me teach you a little lesson. So he went inside the room, brought her something and did to her. Her stomach will not stop biting for two solid weeks until they called me that before somebody dies here. So when I got there, I saw the young girl. I said, I said, I called her name. I said, she they have been trying to get you saved. She's one of my auntie's daughters. And you are carrying Catholic church on your head. Nobody's saying don't go to Catholic church or your whatever. We're talking about Jesus Christ coming into your life. See how a small boy that you are much older than has messed you up. See you now. Are you ready now to give your life to Christ? He said, hey, yes, pastor, pastor, pastor. Yes, 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 I'm ready. She can't get up, oh. I said, lie there and receive Jesus while you're on your back. And after that, I issued an instruction and she got healed and came out of that. And sat there. I said, don't tell me this story. Why did you say? He said, and I called the boy. I said, are you the one terrorizing my house? He said, sir. Sorry, sir. I said, why are you afraid? Relax, relax. I'm, I'm not killing you. He said, sir. No, no. I said, relax, relax. I said, come, I gave him my hand. He, he pulled it. He said, no, no, no. I said, relax, relax. I'm not interested in, in doing anything to you. Relax. I gave him my hand again. He fell. I said, no, get up, Satan. Calm down. Son, calm down. You are afraid. But you've been terrorizing people here, including this old woman. Calm down. We, I want us to talk first. I'm not interested in it. I want to hear how that small boy and now told me that he was an apprentice to a native doctor for three solid years. When after that, that he was supposed to go and open up his own whatever, but he, he didn't have the money to get all the things and all So his parents now sent him to go and serve. He said, Pastor, for example, I should come. He opened his room. You see different leaves. He just turned one of the rooms in the BQ into, and he told me that even here, that he has been attending to some people in the village. Small boy. It's true. He now told me how they dealt with policemen that will come inside interior parts sometimes to come and infect and arrest. There are some they will strike with madness, some they will do with other things. I said, you carried it to my house. I said, okay, tell me, why are you afraid now? He said, I don't know. I'm shaking inside. I said, why are you afraid? I thought you have something. Do it on me now. He said, hey, hey, sorry, sir. Let me tell you what I'm trying to say. Did you notice that one chapter, God dealt with God's priest and satanic priest. He's telling you that if we don't rise up to become the alternative in the land, how will you be blaming people for going to the wrong places? How will you be blaming people? If they are striking people blind, striking people deaf, some of them in the womb, and all that in this place, and the Christians don't rise up to take the power of God to become deliverers in the land, how will the people who don't know Christ, even when they come to your church, they know you are not a solution to their problem. When they have problems, they go back to inside the village, and console those satanic priests. And now that means adding more demons upon demons. 
and problem is getting complicated. Because what makes us a solution is the Holy Spirit. This is what I want you to go home thinking about. Say it again, I'm a priest. Then say this, as a priest, I'm the alternative to native doctors. That's where I want you to go home. Tomorrow, I'll teach you how to function. So that from now, there is nothing any native doctor, any wizard can do around you, around your family that will work. This time, they gave somebody poison. You don't need to send for any pastor. I will show you the secret now. My good man from Beno, he's from Beno, and he used to be into fetish things. They are retired military people. I, I, I like the Northerners when they are, but not the fanatics anyway. A grown up boy that was walking in Abuja went home and went to drink with his friends, and they started boasting who is stronger than the other. You know these fetish things. And so the other one put something in his beer, and he drank. His stomach swelled, and he fainted and was vomiting all sorts of bloody things and was about to die. They called the father and it was my gate man. And um, they called me and I got back. I said, don't worry. Call him on the phone. Put a phone in his ear. We will stop that while you get there. I want to teach you something. I've been looking for opportunity to get him serious with God and saved. And we told Mr. Death to hold on. Can't touch that boy. Death is a person in case you don't know. It's a person, it's a personality, it's a spirit. It's one of the fallen angels. Anyway, I now told him, bring water. Let me, uh, I'll show you that tomorrow. I said, bring water. He brought water. I said, I, 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 said, I hope you are the one that brought it. He said, yes. I said, look at it. You are the one that brought it. He said, yes. He said, watch what I'm going to do. I'll speak to the water you, you, you brought. Not, not bring water for me to bless you go and keep it behind. We say, go home. Come and carry it tomorrow morning. Put salt. Put salt. I'm talking about commanding creation to obey you. When you were created, you were given dominion over all aspects of creation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is an insult if the leg of vulture, the leg of monkey, they tied it in front of your shop. That's why you're afraid. <laughs> Pastor, I saw the thing with my two eyes. I just got to show up on Monday. I saw the thing. It was the head of monkey. No. The Bible said that creation has been groaning and traveling in pain, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. What happened is when man fell, everything in creation, what? Fell with him. And they all became subject to vanity, to devil. And the devil was manipulating them. So, what he has done is that he has taught his own priest how to use created elements to mesmerize people's lives. Now, God's own children, who now have dominion over creation, you have authority over the moon, the sun, the atmosphere. You have authority over everything in creation. Because salvation means you have been restored back to what Adam lost. I said salvation brings that what Adam lost when he fell, he has been restored back to you. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Now you are the one. The Bible said he gave up dominion over all the works of, of his hand. And when he gave them dominion, he left nothing out. It's something I did to the young boy. I told him, I said, bring your basket. I heard that you, you pour water, it won't leak. He said, I said, bring it. Do that thing again. He went inside and did it and held a basket of water i said okay just watch with all these leaves that you gather just watch what i'm going to do i said basket leak out all the water in it and all the water poured in his hands i said all it took me was just an instruction can somebody say amen yeah. say you know how to pour water in a cup and turn it it won't pour he said yes i said okay just hold your cup he held it i said cup when he pours water in you, reject the omens that he normally casts on you. I said, go and try it. I said, even for now till one month, if I give you time to try, you can never get that thing to happen. He tried the water poured out. He tried, tried, tried the water poured out. I was trying to teach him how to, because I know if he gives his life to Christ because he's afraid of me. When I, I travel back, 
he will go back i wanted to show him that there is an alternative that jesus christ is super i just gave instruction to cop oh ordinary cop i said cop the boy will do what he does but throw out the omen out don't take it you know why the bible says creation is subject to bondage not willingly they are not submitting willingly they are forced when Satan fell, it's like when the children of Israel were in oppression in Egypt. So, see what creation is doing. The moment they meet God's priests or people who know the real God, who can tell them to go back and do what they were created initially to do, then they rebel against the priests and all the false priesthoods. So, for example, somebody buries charm, and the charm is ordered to be killing people. And then a child of God comes and said, All oh, it! Earth. man is your master when god created you earth, he created you to serve man not to kill man the enemy has instructed it will say i've been looking for somebody who will help me go back with my original purpose the moment you issue instruction you know what the earth does it vomits out that original instruction destroying charm is not a big thing at all all you have to do is speak to the elements What baffles me is that there were people in the Old Testament who operated in some of these realms, like Moses. He would take sand, throw it in the air, and he become boys on people when he was dealing with the Egyptians. And Christians who have the authority don't know. Didn't you see Jesus speaking to the storms? Didn't you see him speaking to the wind? Why will you not tell me that your father's burial, the native people put rain? That they even asked you to bring money. You couldn't bring money. So they brought rain and scattered the barrier. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. I told him in Lagos, I said, anybody that has goods that has not been sold for one year in your shop, people are not coming to buy it. He has stayed there for six months, one year, two years, three years, five years. Just say that you will give God 10% of the proceed. I will sell it for you in two weeks. I, I, I like this kind of thing because Elijah said, The God that be God, that be God, let him, the God that answered by fire, let him be. If you notice, sometimes you see me anywhere I go for crusades, I will always ask for people to come on stage. So it's not, it's not joke. You know, it, it, because some people think uh, some ministers arranged some people, you know, those kind of things. I used to think like that when, when I was not born again. I would go for crusades, I would stay in the field. And I also know that we pray. I say, Who are they fooling? Bring one out, let's see. Bring one deaf person or <laughs> blind person. I will know that, that God is uh, who are you fully. Miracles stop happening after Jesus left. So when I got saved and God said you are to preach, I told him no. I know who I was before. I didn't used to believe. So if the gospel is real and Jesus is alive, I must have the ability to give evidence to the people. So that their faith will not be, not be on guesswork. So I threw the challenge. And some businessmen came. He said, Pastor, yes. <laughs> say, my own whatever. One machine I bought. I said, it's a small thing. What? Including my, let us close. It's late. I, I'm going to show you something. Especially those of you who are going into politics, leadership, business leadership, and all that. There are some things I'm going to leave with you. Because the days are getting more and more evil. So you cannot be in Christ and you're feeling intimidated. All the people that surround you, like Daniel, are magicians, astrologers, and you are afraid. You don't know what to do. No, my, my Bible said, God make it divine and smart. I turn it the counsel of the wise men backward. But the same God confirmed the words of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers. You see, you can talk to your compound. Say it. Talk to the atmosphere. That from now, you're going to start functioning according to the original plan God had in mind when he created you. That any human being that comes here to bury anything or to throw any charm to affect him, send it back to the person's house. That's how I blinded the native doctor. He didn't know I left instruction to the atmosphere. When they carried him, yes. When you should stroke the wind, he obeys you. You are the real master, not that man trying to make rain. 
you are the redeemed of the lord who have right to say so <laughs> can somebody say amen he said election is coming they are consulting they are going here they are going there don't you know you have somewhere to consult oh stand up on your feet it's a simple prayer and that's how you're going you know the simple prayer god revealed to me my priestly ministry i say you are the alternative to native doctors you cannot be in the street and people are still looking for a solution when daniel was in babylon they knew that that is the highest place you refer every case when the astrologers are tired the magicians are tired the witches and wizards are tired they say there is one man here you can imagine when you start manifesting creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god the reason they are still subject to bondage is because those who will liberate them are not manifesting the bible said their bondage will last until now what does it mean to by now until the glorious liberty of the sons of god that means our redemption should result in the redemption of creation that's the last message i was telling you last night that there is a third thing jesus paid for when he took a piece of thorn from the earth and put on his head he lifted the curse the dominion of satan over creation over business over your family over marriages over your career so that when satan wants to manipulate creation you can issue an instruction and reverse that order can i hear you say amen anyway just take my bible if you're hearing what i'm saying say i hear i have a word for you from the lord thank god for healing thank god for crusade what will set i bring instead free it's not just the healing that we come to deliver it's equipping the people with tools of power it's equipping the people because when we finish we leave tomorrow i'm going to go you are going to be here and only 2007 is around the corner some of you have been doing business nothing is coming out of you you don't know what is wrong it's not three days preacher come and go and go Umo by come and go no what Umo by knows belongs to all saints that is a priest that is functioning when are you going to start functioning Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, reveal to me. <laughs> Open my eyes to understand how to function as a priest. Open my eyes to understand how to function as a New Testament priest. Kabalo <laughs> Hey, 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 Open my eyes to understand how to function in my place as a New Testament priest. Open my eyes to understand. Give me a revelation. You will just see how things will break off people without anything. Because God placed you on earth to be the master of creation. How can leg of monkey tie your business? How can the, the root of one tree and the leaves mix with the horn of one elephant tie your marriage, tie your womb? Creation is placed force to do such dirty jobs because their masters are not giving them a different instruction after this weekend when anybody is having a problem in your street or around you like elijah you will say bring him to me that he will know that there is a god in israel can i hear you say amen jesus not only died to reconcile man back to god he died to reconcile all things including creation all things where creation will be functioning according to god's own purpose and rebelling against every demonic instruction what many people didn't know they talk about the battles of the old testament when joshua led an army of people who are in covenant with god who are in alignment with god the land of Jericho helped them to massacre those giants because they've been obeying them by force. They've been crying from oppression. 
The Bible calls that land the land that eats up or vomits out its inhabitants. Because of the abominations they were committing it. That's what God was telling them. Those nations seek after enchamers, decromancers, wizards. Because of that, the land vomited them out. It's because of that the Lord drove them out. And God warned the children of Israel. If you start committing the same thing the people were committing, creation will vomit you out too. Well, there are things that defy the land. The moment the land of Canaan saw deliverers, Joshua and his army, they said, thank God at last. They hooked up with the foreign army and destroyed their inhabitants. That's what creation is waiting. The land of Abakliki is waiting for deliverers. The Bible said, out of Zion shall go for the word, the law. He said, saviors shall come out of Mount Zion. Saviors plural the greatest thing you are going to ask god to do for you is to open your eyes to your priesthood and how to function in the nature of what it takes them is two years three years of apprenticeship under a native doctor you become one how can you be a christian for 15 years you don't understand how to operate the laws of god how can you be a christian for three years for five years and the devil still slaps you around Ask God to open your eyes to understand your priesthood. Father, tonight, anyone standing here tonight, upstairs, outside, wherever, that is laboring under a problem caused by one of these satanic priesthoods, or any problem caused by any power of darkness, whatever the nature of the problem is, barrenness, sickness, stagnation in business, stagnation in their destiny, People have placed things saying that they cannot progress here on the altar tonight. We break that yoke over their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the fire of God to consume that yoke right now. I release the fire of God to break that ordinance in the name of Jesus. I issue a word tonight. We command deliverance on their behalf. We command deliverance for them. Whatever the omens are, whatever the symbols are, whatever the tokens are, that we are used to establish, whatever is creating that problem, I command whatever they are to be destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command the diviners to go mad. We declare blindness on the soothsayers. We overturn the counsel of the wicked. And we declare liberty and freedom for your children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Many of you will get home tonight to realize the sickness that has been troubling you is gone. Just like that. Lift your hands and just give him praise. Any aspect of your life that has been stagnating. We command that force of stagnation to clear now. In the name of Jesus. It's time to move on into the speed of your destiny. It's time to move into the speed line. It's time for your destiny to pick on speed. Put back in everyone. What the enemy has taken away from them. What the enemy has stolen away from them. What the enemy has destroyed in their life. Put it back, Lord, tonight. And take away from everyone's life here. Whatever the enemy has put in their life has invested. That is a source of travail and problems. Let each person go home a free man. Let them move on into that next level where they start functioning. As sources of freedom. As channels of deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address dominionimagemedia at yahoo.com or call 01-792-6879, 0803-435-7959, 0803-590-9900, 0805 315-3823.